Hello and welcome to the Grooveheads channel. My name is Benson and in this video I'm going to show you how to configure port forwarding and DHCP reservation on a Cradlepoint MBR 1200B router. Now while this video is focused on Cradlepoint routers, the concepts I'll discuss here are really pretty similar to other brands of routers as well. So why configure your router this in this way? Well DHCP reservation combined with port forwarding will allow you to access local LAN resources like your groove box from the internet. Now a word of caution here, we always recommend virtual private networking or VPNs rather than port forwarding whenever possible. Now VPNs are much more complicated to set up and administer, but if you need something that's very secure, VPNs offer far more security than port forwarding. Okay, with that said, uh, let's move on. Now let me show you the network layout for this video. Here I've got my local area network on this side and I've got my laptop connected via a yellow cable to my router. And it's using the DHCP server here to acquire a dynamic IP address for my laptop. Now I've also got my groove box here and it's connected via a red cable to my cradle point router. Also configured to acquire an IP address from the router via DHCP. I don't recommend using static IP addressing for your groove box when DHCP services are available. In, in particular, DHCP reservation gives you all the benefits of a static IP address without having to configure it there. Okay, now another point here is I've got my blue cable that's connected to the internet to my ISP and in this case my ISP has provided me a static IP address uh, that's this number here and we'll be using that in a moment to test out the configuration now there are times in most cases when your ISP provides you a dynamic IP address meaning that address could change at any time I'll be covering dynamic IP addressing and dynamic DNS in another video okay let's get started Okay, here I am on my computer. I've got my browser up, and the first thing I need to do is log into the uh, home page of this router to configure it. Now, before I do, let me show you real quickly. Here's my yellow cable. It's connected to the router on this port here, and then I've got my red cable that's connecting out of my groove box around here and into another port, both on the LAN side of the router. Now on the WAN side of the router is my blue cable that goes to my ISP, and that's how I'm getting onto the internet. Okay, terrific. Let's come over here to my browser. The first thing I need to do is type in my router's IP address, and there it is, 192.168.0 and 1, and it'll ask me to log on to my router. And there we go, loading all the settings. Now I have kind of a, a dashboard here where I can see all the various settings of my router. Now the first thing I'm going to do is come over here to network settings and I'm going to click on DHCP server. Now as I discussed earlier, this shows me the active leases or the two devices that reached out to the router and obtained these IP addresses. And you can see there my laptop is at uh, .127 and my groove box is at dot nine four. Now this is how you configure DHCP reservation. It's very very simple. I simply click on the device that I want to always receive that IP address and I click reserve. Just that simple. Now every time that the groove box powers down and powers back up and receives that dynamic IP address, it actually will be the same IP address every time. And that'll become important as we move on to step two, which is the port forwardings. Okay, let's go to that setting now. That's up here in network settings and come down to firewall. Up here on the top pane, you see something called for, uh, port forwarding rules. So what am I going to do here? Well, if I want to access this groove box from the internet, what I've got to be able to do is when I type in the IP address, that public IP address, I have to make sure all the packets are directed or port forwarded to my groove box. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to create a port forwarding rule to ensure that always happens. So here, let's click add and I'll give my rule a name and I'll call it groove box. Okay, now it says, what is the IP port on the WAN side that you want to forward? Well, we're going to be using HTTPS, which is a secure way of communicating to the groove box. And HTTPS is always port 443 or 8443. In this case, we're, we're going to go with the default 443. 
So let's type that in there. And then it says, okay, where do you want those uh, packets to be directed to? So here what we want to do is select the so-called local computer. And note here that right there in my list is the groove box. So I'll click that. And then it says, what local port on that device do you want those packets forwarded to? It's the same port, 443. So I'm going to select 443 there. I'll leave the protocol, TCP and UDP, just as its uh, default there, and click Submit. Boom, it's all done. There I can see my groove box, internet port 443 will get forwarded to this local IP address and its port as well. Okay, we have everything configured now. Now we need to test it. So what I'll do is I'll open up another tab in my browser, and what I'm going to do is attempt to reach my groove box through that public IP address that uh, my ISP provided me. So that's pretty easy. First thing I'll need to do is type in HTTPS because all communications with the groove box is over HTTPS SSL communications. And also because of that, I don't need to specify port 443 because 443 is the default uh, for HTTPS. So you can see my uh, IP address came up there in the uh, address bar. I'll click enter and Boom, I'm logged in to, uh, to Groove. I'll type in my username and password. There we go. Sign in, and I'm up and running. So there you go. Let's test out a few things here. The first one is, let's, put, uh, let's click the light bulb button there. Yep, there it goes, it works. Let's go ahead and click that guy back off. And I can change my digit color here to, um, to red. Okay, pretty simple. Pretty clear, pretty clear it works well. So here's what's really cool though. Now I'm going to show you on my phone how I'm going to access the Groovebox as well. And the first thing I'll do is I'll uh, log into my phone here, which I have uh, set up with a password. And in doing so, I'm going to go over here to the Safari button and open up my default browser. Now one thing you should note there is I'm connected over the AT&T LTE network, meaning I'm actually on the internet with this device, not on my local LAN. Okay, so I'm going to click on Safari. There it is. Now I need to type in that 98, uh, that 98 address, which is my public IP address, my IP address to the outside world. I'll click it and boom, there it is. There's my uh, Groove login. Once again, I'll go ahead and type in my username and password and get that typed in there. Sign in. Okay, there it goes, loading pages. There, it, there you have it. So now I can click on my button and I can turn on my light. It indeed works. Okay, and then I'll go ahead and uh, let's type in a new uh, value up there. We'll make that uh, value 99. How about that? Click OK. Did it work? It sure did. So there you have it. I've configured my router for DHCP reservation to ensure my Groovebox always gets the same IP address. Then I configured port forwarding so that in any requests from the internet get forwarded to the, uh, to the correct uh, device on my local LAN. So it was pretty simple. And in the next video, I'll show you how to use dynamic DNS and dynamic IP addressing uh, to access my Groovebox from a name. But that's all for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. Groove on.